The hardest part of this book for audio is the fact that she is, she can't talk. Yes, right. Yeah. So, so we've got a narrator who can't, who only has her inner thoughts. And when you started doing it with the echo chamber, yeah, I was like, I would seriously like played that part for like all of my friends. I'm like, you got to hear what he did. Cause they all, you know, the ones that read the book and they're like, Oh my God, that's so perfect. It was just, it was a take that you took that yeah. without I didn't know how you were going to do it. And it was perfect because then we knew that she wasn't saying anything out loud because she can't yes. it'll kill her brothers. Yes. Um, so that extra step that you took was just like chef's kiss. Perfect. Can you give me your name? His full lips mesmerized her as he requested such a simple thing. Elsa, she replied in her mind. My name is Elsa and I'm not crazy even though telling you my brothers were turned into swans makes me feel that way. But they did. In a few weeks, they'll be back, and you can see them. That's why I can't go with you, even though every part of me is dying to. I need to call you something. Do you have a name? She nodded. Michelle Prince, how are you? I'm good. How are you? It's great to meet you, or face you yeah virtu virtually meet me i mean i i could be an avatar of some kind couldn't i have some kind of animation i might not even exist i could have voiced this you could have you could have been an ai that actually did it right because there's a lot of ais that will submit to me and i'm like mm, no really you will get yeah. auditions to narrate your audiobook and they're ai yeah i've actually been getting that for about five years now they're and like what do they consider? sound like a robot consider a, <laughs> consider how I can read this for you and I'm like I don't think you're gonna get my sarcasm and yeah exactly I, tend to ha I do have quite a bit of it so thank you for maybe that's my British roots you were able to understand my sarcasm in there, so. <laughs> for in the book if we're in the muted swan I was a lovely yes. book so you thank have you. British origin so whereabouts in Britain what do you know how far back I know that they were from Liverpool, and I know they changed their name from Cox, C-O-X, to White when they came over because they thought it was a swear word. Okay. That's not all I know. That's well, all I know. <laughs> coincidentally, I was born in Liverpool. Oh, wonderful. My whole family um, are from Liverpool. And when we trace the, or actually my cousin traced the origin of the family, um, because my name was Makatea. Uh, okay. uh, which is an Irish name, and uh, I changed it. Anyway, supposedly, I don't know how many generations back, but not that many. Be anyway, so it was at the time, I think, of the potato famine in Ireland. Old man McAteer lived in Ulster in what is now Northern Ireland, okay. and they decided the family were going to move to the United States. You know, the whole Ellis Island thing, you yes. know, that time. And so the biggest sea, you can't, the, the biggest seaport at that time was Liverpool. And so what they did was they, they sailed from Ireland east to Liverpool. And the whole idea was they were going to work there and live there until they'd got enough money together to buy the passage across the Atlantic to the United States. Mm -hmm. And so they ended up, it was a, it was a, a, a as far as I know, it was an old man McAteer and his wife and some children, I forget how many. Anyway, he, uh, he, they get enough money for him to go to the US. So he gets on a boat and heads across the Atlantic to the US to get set up and he's going to call for them once he's got himself set up. Only the ship sinks on the way. Oh no. And she's left in Liverpool <sighs> with the kids. And apparently she had to remarry and then that's where the British side of my family comes from. So I could have been American and you, you could, could have been, been British. I could you know? have. I, I, yeah, I'm we actually could be having be this visiting. conversation with me in the USA and you in Britain. <laughs> yes. Mm. So that's I how it never started. Know. You yeah. never know. I, yeah, I actually will be going to Blackpool next year for books on the beach. So I figure I'm going to spend a few extra days and I've never been to England. So I'm going to. Blackpool's a, a Blackpool's a fun city. Blackpool, 
to give an American equivalent. I'm guessing because I haven't been there, but I'm guessing I've been to Blackpool many times, but I'm guessing that Blackpool is very much like Atlantic City. It's a seaside okay. <laughs> resort in the north of England. Yeah. So what yeah. month are you coming? Um, August. Oh, it'll be warm in August. You'll be fine with the weather. Yeah. Blackpool can get pretty wet and windy and wild in the winter. I am not. That is not a problem for me. I'm from Minnesota. And so when, like, for me, I'll walk around with just a T-shirt on and it'll be five here which is as long as there's no wind, I'm yeah. good. I can go down to probably it. We went to, I went to Iceland this last winter and they were, we went to something they're like, Oh, it's going to be like five degrees Fahrenheit. You're going to want a coat. And I'm like, mm, is it windy in there? Cause it was an indoor <laughs> thing. And they're like, no, I'm like, oh, psst, psst, that's nothing. That's yeah. We were, we were finding it was very funny when we go on any outings, we were the only ones that weren't like triple bundled up. And we're like, my friend and I were like, eh, as long as there's no wind, it's fine, you know? I mean, we don't complain until it gets to, like, negative 20 around here, so. So you're from Minnesota. Are you in Minnesota now? Yes, I am. Whereabouts? Um, The Twin Cities area, so the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. I'm a suburb there, so. Believe it or not, I've been to Minneapolis. Yay! I, um, when I was a radio broadcaster, which I seem to have given up now to become a full-time audiobook narrator. Um, I used to go to broadcasting conventions every year. In fact, in fact, sometimes twice a year in the United States. And there was one called The Conclave, which is run by the really nice people at Brown University. And okay. it was a, a meeting of radio people from all over the United States and Canada. And it was in, it was in Minnesota. And we even went, as part of the convention, they took us out to a Minnesota Twins game at the, the Twin Dome. I don't know if they still play there. They don't. It collapsed. <laughs> so oh. we now have Twins Field, uh, the Target Stadium, and then we have the Vikings now play. We've got a beautiful uh, facility now that is all glass that the football players play in. So The Twin Dome was an interesting one because when you went in, you could feel the air rushing out because they yes, pressurized you, it and that's what kept the You always off. have to hold the hat. You always have to hold yeah. the hat when you would go through there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was, so an interesting yeah. stadium, but obviously it didn't work if it collapsed. Well, it 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 went 20 years past. Let's see. Sorry, I think it was 10 or 15 years past when it was supposed to. And then we got okay. a snowstorm with like, I think we got 20 or 22 inches or something like that. And it was just too much for the roof and it collapsed. So because the only thing holding that roof up over the dome was the air pressure from the mm -hmm. fans that blew the air in, which was maybe not yeah. the best idea in hindsight, I'm guessing. No, I mean, there's other domes that work. It was just they didn't do oh, the maintenance okay. they needed. Yeah, because right. that one I, was built. Uh, it, it was as old as I was. I think it was built around the same time I was born. So much like me, you know, you start getting old, you need to do the maintenance. So they weren't doing it. But There was a good atmosphere yeah. in the stadium, though. I remember that. But yeah. they were playing the Milwaukee Brewers. So I think that's kind of a local derby, isn't it? Uh, local oh, rivalry yeah, there? They're, they're only six six hours away. So, yeah, we're kind of... Kind of close, okay, six so. hours. Six hours away in Britain would put you in the in the water. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's that's one thing. Yeah, going from the from the ba base of Minnesota up to the top, you're 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 you've got a good seven eight hour drive. So yeah, six seven yeah. Hours, so it was a nice place. I was there in the summer, obviously, because I went to the baseball. But it was interesting to yeah. see that uh, our hotel had like a, a covered walkway over the street to the like the next block, and like each city block was linked by these overhead tunnels so that where they call them skyways called and that's because of the weather is it yeah and it just you can actually and we've expanded since then um you can actually never leave the skyways if you want because there are grocery stores in there there is a hospital that's connected by skyways you can go to a vikings game you can go to um plays because everything is connected by skyways and there's actually an underground tunnel too for all of them so wow it was like being in the jetsons <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i think it, it was one of those things we had a conference in minnesota and I was there for, it was for writing, it was for mystery writing. And everybody yeah. was like, oh, it's raining, it's cold. And I said, just go the Skyway, you can get everywhere. And they right, did not, okay. but they, you really literally can get everywhere and have 
you never if you want you can walk around there and never leave right if you want. But you're going to come to Blackpool, and what's the name yes. of the? I'll look up the thing in Blackpool because I um, might go. Because yeah. if it's is that it all authors? Fun. Is it authors? It's all you know, authors. Yeah. It do no harm for me to meet beach. a few authors. <laughs> you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's called Books on the Beach. Yeah. Um, and it's and, in August. Yeah. It's in August. I think it's the 18th or so, I don't know that weekend. Whatever that. Okay, is. I'll find it, uh, and please stay in touch because if you are going to be over, it'd be good to meet up and we could talk about absolutely. books and audio books and stuff, and yeah. We do a little promo with the pictures and everything. Yeah, all that could be fun. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you're absolutely. from Minnesota. You're from Minnesota. You grew up there. You live in in uh, near, in a suburb of Minneapolis. Then. Yeah, up uh, technically St. Paul, but same difference. Okay, <laughs> okay, because it's twin cities, isn't it? Minneapolis and Paul. Yeah, yes, I'm, it is. I may have gone through your suburb on the way to the airport because I remember getting in a taxi there to get the plane home, and it was the drive. It was the driver's. First, he, t he I got in and we, we, he said, oh, this is my first day on the job as a taxi driver. I said, oh, well, you're in luck. I've got an easy one for you. Take me to the airport. And he couldn't find it. You know, and we were literally going through suburban streets where kids were playing baseball in the street. And I'm thinking, what? Yeah. And it took, a, it took about two hours, I think, to get to the airport from downtown. So Yeah, it only takes about 20, 15, 20 minutes, depending <laughs> on traffic, to get from the airport to downtown. Yeah, so I may well, I, have, I, may well have been past your house on that trip. In you the might have, I, if it took you that long. Yeah, I think someone was running up a tab on you. I don't know. Yeah, it could have been. Yeah, I could have been just being had. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. So when you were a kid growing up, what kind of stuff were you reading? Um, well, uh, fairy tales, obviously, mm -hmm. this one. Um, yes. I read like The Changeling. Um, I was really big into Babysitter Club. My generation, you either were a Babysitter Club girl or you were a Sweet Valley High girl. I was mm -hmm. a Babysitter Club girl. Um, yeah. I was reading very inappropriate things at a young age. Um, mm -hmm. That I know because I do write young adult books and people are like, is this good for my kid? I'm like, I was reading Sydney Sheldon at 12. <laughs> so I am not the person you want to ask. Because um, my mom's like, as long as she's reading, I don't care. And I'm thinking... Mom, do you know what I'm, don't worry, don't worry. She doesn't even know what I'm wearing. Yeah. So that was kind of my mom's thing. Um, so I read a lot, you know, when I was younger, absolutely. And yeah, that would be the stuff I read when I was younger. A lot of that type of stuff. And when did it turn into writing? When I got irritated with a book. <laughs> it was. Oh, you thought you could irritated. do better? Basically, yeah. That was kind of That's it. That's good motivation and... to do anything, though. That's why and I got into was. radio. Yeah. Exactly. I was just, I was frustrated with the book and I'm like, I read all this, these pages just to get this. I'm like, no, we're not doing this anymore. So I just started writing um, my first book, which was Chrysalis. And I actually was writing a, what I thought was a prologue. I was going to do a quick flashback to high school. And then when I was like 80, 90,000 words and I was nowhere past them in high school, I was supposed to flash back to them and as adults, it's like, how long is a novel? I'm like, ooh, okay, I guess I got a series now. So that's kind of what happened. And that prologue moved to the third book because I didn't even get there till the third book. I'm like, ah, it's a learning So what experience. what age were you then? At what stage in life was it that you decided to to start writing? I'd be about my mid, or about 30, mid 30, early 30s, yeah. That sounds about right because you're still young enough for, you know, to, you know, you're not... <laughs> you're not like getting on in years where you haven't got many years left, which is when a lot of people start writing, I've found, once they retire and, you know, whatever. So you're still, you're still there for that, but you've had enough life experience to bring into yep. it. You know what I mean? I think that's a, that's yep. a good time of life to start, to start yep. writing. And The Muted Swan, where did the idea for this come from? Because it's a lovely book. It's, I mean... Thank you. You mentioned fairy tale, and, and uh, I think you describe it as an effed up fairy tale. Well, that's the yeah. name of the series. That was yeah. the series. Um, I actually just came back from the Interracial Romance Author Expo. There we go. Um, right. And there's, there's a group of us there that decided we were going to do a series of just fairy tales. So, you know, everybody would pick a fairy tale, and then we'd just kind of twist it and make it grown up. Right. And... One and it is favorite, very grown up, we should say. Yeah, it is grown up. There are yeah. yes, it's grown up. Mm -hmm. um, but in this one, I my favorite fairy tale, and I used to get the the 
the VHS back in the day, you know, when I got to go on Fridays and get to pick a movie, um, it was the wild swans. And that was a Hans Christian Andersen one. So I kind of reread the original, which there was 11 brothers in there instead of 12. And one of them does keep his wing because she doesn't get it done. And, but I just really liked the anime that came out back in the early 80s. So I rewatched that and just kind of tried to see how I could twist it in my own way to bring it up to date, but still have that little bit of mystery and little bit of witchcraft in there. Yeah, but overall, it is a romance as well, too, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah. So what, what category, if you could only pick one category to put it in, what would you put the muted swan in? I guess in romantic fantasy, I guess. Okay, be, yes, I, yeah, I'd agree yeah. with that, yeah. And the characters, where do they come from? Um, well, the original originals, um, um, I kept them with, I kind of kept in a little bit of a Minnesota theme, even though I don't say where they're from. So I kept her, you know, with our Swansons and Duke was just me being silly with, you know, the, he was the prince in the movie, in the, in the original, he was the prince. So I was just kind of keeping that theory. But you Um, called him Duke King. So you still gave him a a regal kind of a Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah. No, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because it told you straight away that he was an heir to Mm -hmm. to something and you know with his father being you know uh being well off and you could see yeah you could see that that he was someone who would end up with um a a substantial amount of profile in the community when the time came and you could see you could see that who he was that was very very smart it was nice yeah yeah it's the little things that you put in there um and i thought healthcare would be good because she'd be sick and you know that's kind of my thing because I I worked in ER on and off a lot when I was younger. Now you did? I work in health. What what, what did you just, do in ER? I was just um, the I was just the clerk. But the problem uh-huh. is, like in smaller hospitals, well, in our hospital, like if there's a trauma, I would go in the room and take direct orders from the doctor so I could put them in while he was while he was throwing out the orders so I could put them all in our system while the nurses were doing this stuff. So. You know, I got to go in on the traumas and stuff, which I liked. And I worked night shift, which is always understaffed. So I went into rooms as chaperones and stuff. And I just paid attention really well when, you know, I had to call in like ambulances or helicopters and stuff to get people out of our place to a better, to a, not a better, but a, a, a higher level trauma center and stuff. So, wow. So you're of, literally dealing with life and death situations. Yeah. So and you're part of the I, team I, that makes a difference and saves lives. Yeah. That's yeah. I'm a paperwork be, girl. <laughs> yeah, I'm a yeah, but the phone still, call girl. Yeah, but still, it's, it'd be more yeah. fulfilling than say working in a bank doing paperwork. Yeah. You know, right? Uh, exactly. And now I I work in healthcare, but I work on the backside. I work with insurance and stuff, but yeah. that's just so I could work from home. Yeah. Um, so still important, yeah. though. I mean, because if still people important. didn't didn't have that, they wouldn't get the healthcare if all if all the paperwork was all screwed up. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, but and I, zero and I tolerance for mistakes as well. I'm guessing exactly. The, yes. the stakes are pretty high. Yeah. Yes. So. Right. Yeah. So I did. Uh, yeah, and I worked there, and then I worked at a smaller one where it was very small, like four rooms that were. So when we had a trauma, it was a big thing, and so I kind of know those things, but I also know the simple things that come into the ER too, and. So. Right. So that makes so much more sense now with Duke working. Well, he's a trainee. Was he a trainee doctor or trainee surgeon? He's trainee. Uh, he, he's a surgeon. He was a surgeon. He's a resident. So, yeah, what would be yeah. resident. Yeah. Yeah. So to have to have that in there. Oh, so you were drawing on your own knowledge of how that works for those particular yeah. scenes. That's nice to know. Yeah. Yeah. That's Did awful. you do much research for the book then or was it all from your own personal knowledge um, well some of it because i had to learn about the histamines and stuff like that so that's okay yeah the yeah things, yeah the things i learn depending on which book i do i do a lot where i have health and health in there yeah. <laughs> healthcare workers um and sometimes i would like tag my doctors that i used to work with and they'd review it for me so that was nice so. yeah well just to make sure that it was like, like they were the uh, the technical yeah. advisor yeah, exactly. Basically, they, it was movies. it was pretty funny. One of them from the ER was like, wow, you were really paying attention to what we were saying. I'm like, yeah, I wasn't right. writing this at the time, but I paid attention to, oh, it's going to go yellow. Oh, it's going to go this way. Yeah. I to know which kind of blades and stuff to put in. And yeah. Right. So you actually had medical professionals that you worked with reading your books. Yeah. 
Right. That's pretty brave because you've got to work with those people. And if they took um, it, yeah, okay. Nah, they're good people. Nah. Yeah, they're good people. And actually at that point I had transitioned out of the ER. So they were just friends that now they were moved on to being friends as opposed to colleagues. But yeah, yeah no, yeah, I've yeah. had, but yeah, I wasn't afraid of them coming after me. <laughs> and the character of the witch, where does she come from? Well, you know, God always have that evil stepmother, I guess. <laughs> Um, you didn't have an evil stepmother, story. though, did you? No. I had. I've had a couple. My dad's, you know, a, a couple of monogamist. evil stepmothers. What? Nah, they weren't all that bad. But I have yeah. had two stepmothers, and I that was more from the original because that was kind of how the original one was. She was a manipulative. She had she had more of her mother like guiding her to help twist the king in the original. But yeah. Right. Oh, I see. So you, yeah, you, you took some of that. So did you? I mean, I'm sure you didn't have evil stepmothers, but no, no. But maybe stepmothers of, of varying uh, degrees. We'll just leave it yes. at that. I think to be, you know, we don't want to upset anybody if they watch this. But did you find then, and do you find with your writing? Because I find with my writing that you try and get even for people. In I'll tell you how I do it. If you know, in radio particularly, I worked for a lot of narcissists and sociopaths because that's the nature of uh, that kind of business on the outskirts of show business. Uh, you, It attracts a lot of bad people. Um, it, it does. Uh, and uh, a lot of the people I've worked for, I've put in, I've made evil characters in, in I've, I've done impersonations. There's a particular Scotsman who, for obvious reasons, I won't name. And I've got him in a lot of books and he's always the baddie. And yeah. and I and anyone who's worked with me when they hear that will know who he is because he's quite a big deal in British radio. And I often I often people who I don't like, I'll put them in people's audio books. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you do you do that with writing as well? Uh, never. I would never do that at all. <laughs> it's it's um, incredible. No. It's it's very immature, but it's incredibly There's, therapeutic. It is. There are certain <laughs> names that I won't use for a hero. That's for sure. Or okay. a heroine. Okay. Um, okay, there are certain yeah. names that can be used as an evil person yes. really easily for me. So yes. Those are things that, yes, I can do that. Um, yeah, I will do that. And absolutely, it's my, I would you rather have me kill them in real life? Of course not. <laughs> you know, it's not worth it. I it's work with a, I work with another narrator. I work with lots of narrators, obviously. I work with a narrator. She's now in Pennsylvania. Uh, her name is Ishkia. And she was telling me she was on the phone once talking she was she was in a somewhere public it could have been like a, a walmart or something and she was on the phone and i forget who she said but she basically just said i've just killed and she named a name while she was on the phone and the person walking past thought she was talking about she'd, she'd actually killed a person and she was talking about in her book <laughs> she'd just killed whatever this character was you know brian or whoever it was yeah. and she was on the she's i've just killed brian she, so i suppose you have to be very careful when you're talking about books yeah. with one side i do have a t-shirt that that warns people that i'm a writer so just don't worry about my browser history and stuff so <laughs> <laughs> and now that i'm going into mysteries now i'm starting Are I, you? I, have my, I have my first cozy mystery coming out um later this month so yeah, yeah. So, I've I've heard of cozy mysteries before. Just just recap what a cozy mystery is for me. Um, I'm trying to think like a Midsummer Murders type. Yeah. Or yeah. um, I'm trying to think uh, like, well, um, I don't know if you remember Murder She Wrote. Yes. That would be considered. Yeah, that would be considered. This is kind of a up update of um, Heart to Heart. So sure. I don't know if you watched okay. that one way back in the yeah, day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I've got a yeah. married couple that yeah. never let do they have a dog their... called freeway <laughs> they do not but they do tra they're travel vloggers and okay. so they they travel all around because um one of my hardest parts with cozy mysteries is it's always in the same town um and I'm like at some point you know i understand that it's dangerous in the little parts of england and midsummer murders i mean you can't go to a small town there you know because it's always the same place but i i, I that's my hard part with reality so i put them at different vacation places and they never let a dead body get in the way of a good vacation they well no, they still they still have a good, a good holiday absolutely they just have to solve them they just have to figure out who gets murdered you know who murdered yeah. them but there's no reason to miss out on the sand and sun and all the other good stuff so in real life if somebody just like in murder she wrote wherever she went there was a murder 
overwhelming yeah, circumstantial evidence should mean that she should be questioned at some st- at some stage exactly. in all of these investigations. What's the common denominator here? Well, she's always yeah. here when somebody goes down. Yeah. And then she's uh, then she solves it and sells a million copies. So I'm just saying she's setting up herself. Yeah, yeah she's got motive there too. Yes, never exactly. She's got I know. motive, and it's all financial. Yeah, yeah. See, it okay, all makes well, sense now. <laughs> the muted swan is the first book we've done together. So we can only talk about that. We can't talk about your your. I'm sure Danielle Pye in Florida, who I work with, we did it. We did a lovely um, a murder book that was. I'm sure she said to me that was a cozy murder mystery. So I think I've done at least one of those. I think oh, so. Wonderful. Yeah, but your book, The Muted Swan, is why you're here, and that's why we. That's the one we want to talk that's about. Nice. And it's the first one we've worked with. It's the first one you and I have worked on to turn into an audio book. So for you, how was your experience of turning this book into an audio book? When you did, the hardest part of this book for audio is the fact that she is, she can't talk. Yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we've got a narrator who can't, who only has her inner thoughts. And when you started doing it with the echo chamber, yeah, I was like, I seriously like played that part for like all of my friends. I'm like, you got to hear what he did. Cause they all, you know, the ones that read the book and they're like, Oh my God, that is so perfect. It was just, it was a take that you took that yeah. without, I didn't know how you were going to do it. And it was perfect. Cause then we knew that she wasn't saying anything out loud cause she can't cause yes. it'll kill her brothers. Yes. Um, so that extra step that you took was just like chef's kiss. Perfect. It was Awesome. Well, thank you very much. I'm so glad you like that. I it, it is, it's something since I've been doing audiobooks about three years now. I've done 175 of them. As there was one another one released today. I've got, I'm up to 175, and it's one of the things that I like because I, I I know some narrators hate auditioning. I actually really quite like auditioning, even if I don't get the job, because each audition is a challenge. And obviously in your one, the challenge was she doesn't speak and these are her thoughts. And I've used that little technique before on audiobooks where only when it's needed, because some characters, if they do speak and they have a thought in an audit, often you can just do it, you know, a little bit, a little bit deeper or something like that. And you can tell that they're thinking. But with her, because that was her only dialogue, I needed something. But I have used the echo trick before i don't add sound effects to audiobooks because i wouldn't know where to stop i'd be doing footsteps and the wind and everything so i don't do the sound effects but i do voice effects so i will if someone's thinking like that and it's the only that it's the only way to show that i'll i'll use it sparingly but i will use it if it's needed and your one obviously was one of those so i put that little it's a it's actually it's not echo it's um it's reverb it's a it's a i use echo if someone is speaking on a microphone in a club or something, I'll use echo. And yeah. the other one I'll use if someone's on the telephone, I've got a telephone filter and I'll put one of the one side of the conversation, which is the perspective of like, if we're talking and, and you know that we're talking about one particular character and they're, they've called someone there on the phone, then the one on the phone that they're listening to, I do in the phone filter. But other than that, I just pretty much read them straight. And uh, right. yeah, I'm so glad that worked. Thank you so much for that. I'm glad that yeah. worked. Is that what got me the gig? Is it? You didn't do it in the, in the audition. I didn't do it in the audition. Is that right? Because the, audition, because the audition you did, you just did the prologue. You just did the Zelda okay. and and the King okay. and the and her right. and her father prologue. So, yeah, right. you didn't do that. Okay, yes. well, it wasn't been needed in the in in the audition. I thought it was in the audition. Yeah. Well, it just shows. No, you. it was yeah, just yeah. something that as I was listening along, I'm like, oh, <laughs> I like that because when you're reading, obviously, I can put it in italics. I think that's what I did in this book to let yeah. people know it was her inner monologue. Yeah. Um, because obviously she can't even make a sound. So that was, that was like, I was like, Ooh, I really like that. I love I'm it. I'm glad that's working. So. Cause there is one author I did that with, um, and his main character who it was one of those where he did speak a lot. And then there were a couple of thoughts that he said, and I put it in the reverb and he messaged me and said, take that out. I don't like it. So it isn't for everyone. It's not no, a blanket. No. It's not a blanket solution, but I think, I think with her it was, cause that was, that was her only dialogue. Uh, I don't want to give any spoilers away. Might not have been her only dialogue. Maybe Might she did speak. Yes. Maybe yes. she did. Maybe she didn't. You Maybe should download the audiobook. Yes. 
Absolutely. You, you need to find out what it's, happens. It's called The Muted Swan. It's by Michelle Prince. It's a lovely book. It is, by your definition, it is an, an effed up fairy tale. It is a romance. It is a fantasy as well. And there's all sorts going on, including a wicked witch and, uh, and, and a romance between two people who couldn't be more different, really. Uh, but it is, it is a proper love story. It is nice. If you'd like to get it, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, there are links in the description where you can click them and it'll take you straight to Amazon and you can download it. And uh, But you can also get it on Audible and Apple. Is it still called iTunes? I forget what they've done. Or I, wherever you get yeah. your audio books. Yeah. 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 Apple it's, Books, iBooks, yeah. It's, it's Apple Books. So. Oh, yeah, whatever it is. It's in all of those as an yeah. audio book and also as a book to read if you prefer to read. But uh, maybe you're, you're too busy to read or maybe you've got a road trip coming up or you're going to be busy working or doing some jobs around the, the house. You might want to walk the dog and listen to the audio book. You know, you, the, uh, you, you yeah, can do whatever time. you like. You do? You walk that's the dog I, and listen to audiobooks? That's what I do. I walk the dog and listen to audiobooks. So. Right. So the dog doesn't know what's going on at all, really? No clue. No clue. The <laughs> only thing is, the only hard part is I have to stop it if there's like, you know, like Siri pause so I can, yeah. You know, right. Type. Okay. When, well, I, that's when a... I'm coming up on another dog or something. So. <laughs> right. You've got yeah. some work to do. Or you got to get the little <laughs> bag out. Yeah. Yes. That. Yes, exactly. I think it was Jerry Seinfeld that said, if aliens were watching us through telescopes, and they saw two beings and one is leading the other one by a lead and the other one from time to time stops and picks up its poo. Who are the aliens going to think are the dominant species on our planet? <laughs> well, I know who runs my house and it's definitely right. not me. You know, <laughs> okay. Absolutely not. So. The Muted Swan but, by Michelle Prince. It's a lovely book. It's also an audio book. Uh, get it now. Links in the description. And what's next for Michelle Prince? Uh, well, obviously, I've always a groomsman with this cozy mystery, but mm -hmm. I do have another set of fairy tales that I have one of them out, um, mm -hmm. but they are called the uh, Enchanted Bedtime Series. Yes. Um, and that one, or Bedtime Stories. And so I've got one of them out. I'm trying to get a couple more of those out and then start probably putting those in audio. So. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you very much. It's been lovely talking to you and great lovely to virtually to you. meet you. Yes, hopefully, exactly. hopefully we will meet up when you're in Blackpool. I'll check it out. It's, do you say it's called Books on the Beach? Books on the Beach. I'll send you a link to their Facebook group or something and then you can kind of figure out what they're Great. doing. Great. I'll check that out. If you do go to, Liverpool, to to Blackpool, you need to check out Liverpool as well. It's not that far away. It'd be easy to get to on the train and you can see all the well, beautiful stuff. Well, I'm going to have to fly into there. You're going to fly into Liverpool? You're probably flying to Manchester, I would have thought. You might be able to fly into Liverpool, but uh, you're, thought... Manchester is the big airport in that part of the world. Oh, uh, okay. Because at first I was thinking London, and then some, and I'm like, oh, that would take a train ride. Okay, I get it. I yeah. got to figure it all out. I got to figure well, it all one out. Of the, one of the best things to do, and we didn't do it on uh, on that trip, but I've heard that one of the best ways to get from Minnesota to the UK is via Iceland. Because you can have a stopover for ice in Iceland for no, and you've been to Iceland, but I'm sure there's stuff there still to do. You can there's a you lot can get a, there. Uh, you I can get a stopover there. in Iceland, and it doesn't cost any more than if you flew direct. If you know what I mean, oh. you just need to you just need to pay for your accommodation in Iceland, obviously. But you only need yeah. two or three days. Helps you get over the jet lag because you're kind of halfway, and yeah. you can fly direct from Iceland to certainly to London and probably to Manchester probably a lot easier than flying from Minneapolis to Manchester. I don't know, but it might be worth checking that out, but I've heard that's a good way to go, yeah. particularly with, I, with, with, uh, um, with, uh, Minnesota, with, um, Minneapolis. Yeah. I've heard. But yeah. We've got sure a direct gonna... flight to Reykjavik now. So I'm very happy about that. <laughs> yes. But you'll definitely be able to fly from Iceland direct to London at least possibly yeah. manchester manchester's the biggest airport in the northwest of england liverpool's got an airport too uh, but yeah. i don't think they do many long hauls it's mostly uh europe and ireland uh, and that kind of thing it's not necessarily the u.s i don't think but yeah but you need well, to check I out got a, liverpool because that's liverpool's <laughs> your liverpool is your origin you've got to check out where it the is. family are from 
And you can I see know. all the Beatles stuff and the biggest cathedral in Europe and the greatest football team, although the, the season will be over in August. But uh, well, maybe late August. Is it late August or early August? Um, right in the middle. Oh, like yeah, the no, probably the football so. season. You'll be out of season for the football. But you can go on a tour of the ground if you're a Liverpool Absolutely. fan. Absolutely. Yeah, and I am a, do. I am a castle slash, uh, church. Like oh, yeah. when I went to, when I went to like Germany, that they were like, Oh, you're going to go skiing. And I'm like, no, we're going castling. Hello. Did you, did you go to Bavaria? <laughs> yep. Yeah. So you saw, and I, I say the name of it wrong. The one that's in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. I say Neschwistein, but I think that's the wrong way to pronounce Neuschwanstein. it. Neuschwanstein. There you go. That isn't that incredible. My wife and I went there it once. It is yes. incredible. It's a fairy tale castle. Isn't it the uh, one Disney uh, based? Yeah. yeah. That's it's where Disney just... bases off. Yep. We did that. We did Linderhof. We went down to, we went to Switzerland and went to like the oldest library in Europe or something. And yeah. cause of course, where else would I go? And there was this beautiful, beautiful cathedral that was attached to it. And then of course, you're there, so you got to go to Liechtenstein, yes. and then Austria, and then down to Italy for a couple of days. It, it, nice. For us, that's just you got to realize that kind of driving, like a couple hours, pss, that's getting from one side of the state to the other. That's not. Good, so. <laughs> it's not. We were just like, wait, yeah. we can we can hit five countries and a few. Yeah, that's nothing. <laughs> And you're on the right side of the road there as well in that part of Europe yes, too. So yes. that's making it easier. Yeah. That is a big thing because at first I was like, oh, no. And then I realized, oh, this is okay. I can I can drive here because Lord yeah. knows I, I'm not right. I'm not quite ready for the other. So. Well, you never know. You look, if you're in the northwest of England, North Wales isn't far away. And there's a lovely castle in North mm -hmm. Wales. Conway Castle is a nice, good looking castle. Might be worth checking out. Yeah. But, uh, oh yeah, I'm a I'm a castling person, so I it just depends if I bring the husband with or if I bring my friend with, because yeah. one of them will walk with me, the other one will be like, <laughs> which one? I'm guessing the husband. No, the friend, the the, the one they'll say no. Yeah, my husband will say no. I'm not walking that. <laughs> no, no. But he might come because he's got quite a few uh, colleagues that out of London, so they were talking. They would come up and see him, and yes, so he might come with. I might be able to you, get him. Are you going to spend time in London too? I want to. I mean, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna fly over, I might as well have you know. The well, whole then experience. maybe it'd be best to fly to London, have a few days in London, and then head up to Blackpool because you can get up there on the train. You know, it's yeah. It, I know. I don't know about Blackpool, but uh, Liverpool is only two hours twenty minutes from London on the train. So, uh, but you'll be at Blackpool in under three hours. I would have thought from London. So maybe that's the way to go is to not fly to Manchester is to fly to London, to have a couple of days in London and then make your way up to, to Blackpool. And you might see some and stuff on the way. And that might just be what I do. Yep. I got to figure mm. that all out. Still set all out. We got a couple, couple. It's all part of the fun of it. Planning it is Absolutely. all part of the fun. The anticipation Absolutely. really yes. is. Yeah, there's, there's some, sometimes the anticipation is better than the actual thing. I'm sure it won't be with a trip to, to Blackpool. But, uh, yeah. but if you think about Christmas, you know, it's all anticipation because actual Christmas, yes. once you've had the meal, it's pretty much finished. And you've been you, you've had a good six months of looking forward to that. <laughs> you know, the anticipation <laughs> is the bigger deal. But anyway. That is true. That is yeah. true. So. All right. Well, best of luck with the muted swan. Where can we find out more about Michelle Prince? Um, well, you can find out on my website, which mm -hmm. I, as you can see, I spell my name wrong. I was born before spell check or the French yes. way, whatever you want to say. Okay. Um, so Michelle Prince books, um, yes. you can also find me at uh, any author that you like. I tell them always follow them on Amazon. Cause then you'll know about all their releases. They they're very good at pushing your releases, but I'm yeah. on Kobo, Barnes and Noble, um, smash words i'm at pretty much on anywhere you buy ebooks you can find one of my books on there so i got about 60 of them so there's there's something for everyone in there michelle prince thank you very much thank you